the eyes, what would be your top tip for early creators? I would say start with a small audience that you know really well because it'll be easier to make something they want to watch. Think of everything on a year-long window and you make 52 of them. Commit to making 52, one a week, and something will change. Like, 52 things that are exciting to you. Yes. If you're an aspiring creator like me, chances are you've probably struggled a lot with self-doubt and uncertainty as you started on this creator journey. I know, hours of filming and editing in your room with seemingly no immediate results can be such a drag. I would burn out after making a couple of videos feeling like they're super cringe and then getting discouraged when they don't have that much traction. I felt like the level that I wanted to be at was so far away and because of that, I lacked motivation. And that's when I decided to sign up for VidCon. <laughs> VidCon is basically a four-day conference where you could meet some of your favorite creators and nerd out with other small creators about all things video creation, specifically focused on YouTube. At VidCon, I got to meet some of my favorite creators. These include Colin and Samir, Alex and Roar from Wasabi Productions. Yo. Subscribe to <laughs> Amy Trapes. You better subscribe to Sutter Amy Gates, where I will go to your house and I'll kick you in the eyeball and make sure... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll stop there, just subscribe. Yeah. Bye! Who I basically grew up with. Linda Dong, Sophia Nagard, who also went to my high school, by the way, which is pretty cool. Rich Black Guy, Haley Bailey, and the Try Guys. These creators are so iconic. I've been watching some of them on YouTube ever since I was little, probably from like 2010. And they were the ones who planted a seed in me to want to become a creator myself. At VidCon, I got to pick some of their brains on how to be consistent and motivated as a creator and how to stand out from all the other creators. Um, if you go back and give advice to your younger selves. Beyond attending workshops and master classes where I got to speak to these creators, it was also a ton of fun. There are so many games and booths where you could explore different trendy things. There was a huge floor that was full of games and other booths where you could get free stuff. It really felt like a theme park in there. So there's something for everyone, whether you're a video enthusiast or you're just there to have fun. After going to VidCon, I had an entirely new perspective on what it means to be a creator and the state of the creator economy. So I've summarized my learnings into the top seven insights that I got from VidCon, and then I'm gonna share some of my personal observations that were quite surprising for me as I was walking around VidCon. So be sure to stick to the end for those. Well, with that, let's get into it. So the first main takeaway that I got from VidCon was how revolutionary AI is going to be to the creator game. A lot of these creators brought up tools that I've never even heard about before, such as Descript, Opus Clip, and Gling AI. When I heard about these tools, my mind was blown. You know when you're spending like 10 hours editing the rough cut of a talking head video? Well, now Gling AI and Descript can easily take out those filler words and those awkward silences so that you don't have to painstakingly identify each one of those. Opus Clips is good for people who do both short form and long form because they could find the best content out of your long form video and chop them up into short form videos. Now personally, I've used Descript and Gling AI so far and I think I prefer Descript because Descript has a fuller suite of tools that you could use beyond just cutting out filler words. There's also AI eye tracking so that if you look off camera, they can make it look like you're actually looking at the camera, which is kind of insane, like it's so realistic. And then they could also train AI on your voice to fill in any parts that you forgot to say in the video. I've tried it and it's kind of uncanny because it sounds exactly like me. Ever since starting to use Descript, I could say that it is such a game changer because it literally took out at least like five to eight hours of editing time 
just from the rough cut. I would highly recommend that you guys check those video tools out if you haven't heard of them already. The second main insight that I got from VidCon was that everyone knows that thumbnails are important. It's what draws your eye to a video and makes the viewer click. However, the new insight now is that not only is the thumbnail important, but the first few seconds of the video are also important. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but if you hover over a video, it automatically starts playing the video before you even click into it. So visually, the first few seconds also has to be enticing in order to compete with the other videos on the platform now. I think I saw a YouTube video of an interview that Mr. Beast did where he basically confirmed the same thing, where his team now is hyper-focused on making the first 30 seconds of the video super attractive to the viewer, so then they will click on it. I know this seems a little bit like gaming the system, but someone at the conference brought up a really good point, where if you don't put a ton of effort into the first 30 seconds, no matter how good the rest of your video is, nobody's gonna be watching far enough to realize how good that video is. That's why the first 30 seconds should be the best 30 seconds of that video. All right, the third main insight that I got from VidCon is that even though everyone thinks that YouTube and TikTok are oversaturated now and that new creators can't really enter the game, that is simply not true. So I learned from VidCon that there is a niche for every interest out there. And I thought before VidCon, I was like pretty well versed in YouTubers, uh, maybe less so on TikTokers since I spend less time there. But I thought that I knew like the media landscape pretty well, at least the big creators out there. But after going to VidCon, there were so many creators that I've never even heard of that literally had hordes of children running after them to get a picture with them. So apparently they're famous. Like for example, there were a ton of gaming creators that were big on Twitch. And I guess the side of videos that I watch are more around productivity and lifestyle and career development. So I could see why I never see videos like that. But it was just interesting to observe that there's an audience for every niche out there. So if you're super passionate about a certain topic and you worry that nobody else is going to care, trust me, someone out there will care. Like maybe you're not gonna be as big as the biggest creators, but there will be an audience for you. And it's up to you to try to make your content around that niche topic interesting. So the fourth insight that I learned from VidCon was actually at Colin and Samir's live podcast, which is super cool to just be a part of one of their videos. So this particular podcast revolves around answering small creators' questions and trying to troubleshoot things for them. So even though I was super nervous about going up in front of the mic in front of everyone to ask my question, I made myself do it because I really wanted to know the answer to this question. I remember you said that like early on, you started off making vlogs and that didn't really take off as much as when you started making like interviews or like podcast kind of style videos. Um, so a couple of questions. So the first question is more in general, is like how do you avoid creator burnout when you're first starting out? Um, if you go back and give advice to your younger selves, making those vlogs, like, would you encourage them to keep going even though it might not be working out so well and nobody's really watching? Um, like, what kind of advice would you give to your younger selves then? And then the second question is, if I do ultimately want to become a relationship-based YouTuber, how do I transition from being content to being more relationship-based? Um, when was the last time you cried? Probably a couple of days ago. I'm a big cry baby. <laughs> what, was it, what was it about? Um, so I recently just moved to LA, so I was crying about like moving away from home. <laughs> yeah. So the reason I ask you that is because like when we tried to vlog, I wasn't very vulnerable and I wasn't willing to share anything on camera. And like when you think about vlogging and like it, if you enjoy that level of 
sharing and vulnerability. I think it's interesting um, and maybe cathartic for you. But like personality-based channels, there's something risky about it, right? It feels risky that this person is sharing so much of themselves. And that's from an audience perspective what makes it interesting because you have the courage to share when I don't. Their answer shocked me. They basically said not everyone is meant to create vlogs. I know, that sounds like such a brutal truth because I felt like anyone could create vlogs. That's what makes YouTube so interesting is that you could get a window into someone else's life. However, I was not comfortable showing myself crying on camera just because I didn't know who was watching and I felt self-conscious about what others would think of me. Even if it's not something as extreme as crying, you still have to show the environment that you're living in and the daily routine that you're going through. Even though I think I will still make vlogs in the future, I think that is something that creators should consider if they want to continue making vlogs. main insight from VidCon is that storytelling is king. So there was a creator there, Ben of the Week. Basically, if you're not familiar with his channel, his content consists of him making a sandwich and then he does a voiceover over the sandwich talking about a story of an encounter that he had. And the idea is that the shots that you put into the video are secondary to the story that it's trying to assist in telling. And as Casey Neistat said, no matter how amazing of a drone shot that you got, that, that kind of rhymes, <laughs> nobody's going to care unless it somehow aids the storytelling. If there's no story there, viewers are going to get bored. They're not here to look at a montage of your best videography shots. They're here to hear a story. So that's something that I'm definitely keeping in mind as I script my future videos. All right, the sixth thing that I got from VidCon is that shorts are an amazing tool to experiment with an idea that you have. And it could also be a catalyst for quick growth since it is a relatively new tool on YouTube. However, I say the word can instead of will because not everyone who posts shorts will experience that quick growth. But if you use it correctly and are able to learn what makes a short video good, then you will be at a greater chance of growing your channel. Now, there were a lot of workshops about shorts at VidCon. But I noticed that there were two common ingredients in terms of what all these panelists were saying makes a good short. And the first ingredient is to make the proposition of the video as clear as possible so that viewers immediately know what the video is about before they lose interest and swipe away after a few seconds. That is still important in long form, but not as important as it is for shorts because there's only a few seconds to capture their attention. And then the second ingredient is that you really want your short to make viewers feel something, whether it's feeling a sense of happiness at a comedic video or feeling a sense of motivation for a productivity video. Or there's actually a common trick that a lot of short form creators I've seen use is basically they say that they have to get to the airport in like one hour and they only have that amount of time to get ready. And then it creates this sense of urgency to make you want to stay till the end to see if they actually are able to get ready in one hour. I didn't know that was an actual strategy until someone mentioned it in a workshop and now I feel like I don't watch shorts the same way again. I started noticing patterns of the types of strategies that short form creators use to keep you watching until the end. And I think that's what all creators should do as well. Just pay attention to the videos that really hooked you and got you watching until the end and think about what sorts of techniques they used to get you to watch till the end.
And then the final takeaway that I got from VidCon is that small creators all struggle with perfectionism and burning out. I thought that I was just naturally a perfectionist and that's what's making YouTube so hard for me. But it turns out that everyone struggles with this to some degree. We all expect to make videos that are as good as the creators that we currently watch. But when you think about it, it really doesn't make sense. Like why do we have this expectation for ourselves to do just as well as those creators when we literally have barely any experience. It's like expecting yourself to know how to be a doctor after watching an entire season of Grey's Anatomy when you have literally never stuck foot in an operating room in real life. Uh -huh. Somehow I just thought that I would be able to pick things up super quickly and know how to make a good video just because I've watched so many good videos. And as I've started actually making the videos, I realized how hard it is to actually make the type of content that I enjoy and that I don't really know how to make it better until I start making videos. So it was just really great to see a lot of small creators bond over the struggle together during the conference and feel the sense of community, which was exactly what I was looking for. And if you also struggle with perfectionism, just remember that big creators also had to start from somewhere. And what separates them and everyone else who started their YouTube channels back then is that they have an unwavering belief in their own work. And even though their content wasn't up to their standards yet, they kept going. They still believe that one day they can reach that level of success. And I was really inspired by that mindset. And I hope you guys are too. All right, this brings us to the portion of the video where I talk about my personal observations that were honestly so shocking to me. Number one, the state of the creator economy is so much larger than I thought. Maybe it's because I've always been obsessed with YouTube growing up, but I felt like I was part of this minority that actually watches YouTube daily. And so naturally I thought that YouTube creators are still a very small minority. But what I got from attending the conference is that the economy around those creators is growing exponentially. And get this stat, there was a report that Goldman Sachs put out recently that said that the creator economy is expected to roughly double in size over the next five years. So currently the creator economy is $250 billion today and it's expected to grow to $480 billion by 2027. So that's not even five years, that's like three years. And I feel like I experienced that firsthand because there were so many influencer or creator agencies and marketers there as well, whose jobs are literally to help creators get brand deals, do some of the admin work, um, do legal work, and the list goes on and on. So this industry is already much larger than I thought before. And then the second observation that I had is that the number of subscribers is not the end all be all. It's really about the loyal community of subscribers that you have. And to illustrate this, VidCon has this thing called meet and greets where you could basically lottery for a spot to personally meet your favorite creators and take a picture with them. So one of the creators that I got a lottery spot for was David Sa. And if you guys aren't familiar with his content, he's mostly on TikTok where he has around 3 million followers last time I checked. And he makes content around how to pose confidently in pictures. So I'm personally a big fan of his work because I feel like his videos are fun. They're actually very insightful and actionable in terms of how to increase your confidence in photos. And he just seems like a genuinely nice and sweet person. But when I got to the meet and greet line, there were literally two girls in line. Whereas in all the other lines, there were hundreds of people lined up already, like spilling out of the lines that were set up. I thought I went to the wrong location because I've never seen a meet and greet that had so few people. I thought maybe I misremembered the time, but no, it was about to start in five minutes. So I ended up being the third person in line 
And it was great for me because I got to talk to David for around like 10 minutes and try different poses. But I honestly felt so bad for him because imagine doing your first ever meet and greet in real life and only four people show up even though you have three million followers. I don't know about you guys, but I would be super butthurt by that. So with that picture in mind, I think my goal on YouTube now is to try to really grow a loyal community. Even if it's small, I think it means so much more to me if they're a community that will show up for each other, whether it's, it's at meet and greets or providing advice to each other online. And then the third observation I had, which is pretty funny, is that I realized from just the sheer amount of kids at VidCon that a huge part of the YouTube audience is kids. Watching YouTube is such a solitary experience, at least for me, that I don't really know who else is on YouTube. But when you go there, you see that most of the fans are in their teens or below, and a lot of them still have their parents with them. I felt a little bit out of place because I was probably one of the older folks at VidCon. Um, but it's just so eye-opening to see who might be stumbling upon your content when you post it on the internet. Kind of related to that, but one of the creator agencies that held a workshop was saying that you should create videos at an eighth grade reading level or else your videos just won't appeal to the masses. So I'm definitely keeping that in mind as I make my video scripts because I want them to be as simple as possible while also getting across the point that I want to make. And then the final observation I had was that it's so helpful and amazing to have a community of fellow small creators. Even though I could have done a better job of networking, I met one creator who I connected with and still keep in touch with. And it's just so amazing to be able to share struggles about video making and see others grow as they post consistently because their motivation and inspiration for you to continue on your journey. So after the conference, I started following small creators on YouTube as well, just to see their success and be motivated and inspired by them. So those are all the lessons from VidCon that I learned that have really motivated me to take content creation more seriously and to try to be more consistent. Even though I myself haven't been super consistent over the past year, I think that these lessons were really valuable to me because it made me realize that I'm not alone in this journey. These are all normal feelings to have, whether it's feelings of perfectionism or burnout. So in the future on this channel, I plan to continue documenting my creator journey, sharing some of my career and academic insights, and talk about topics that I'm interested in, such as personal development and personal finance. Which remember, even though they're pretty saturated, they're still a niche for you because you're not like anyone else. So your voice is unique, or at least that's what I tell myself. If you guys wanna follow along on my creator journey, I would love if you guys join the community and hit the subscribe button. All right, see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I never know what to say in these videos. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm yeah. not really good with them. Oh, rich black guy. <laughs> 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 <laughs>